There are a lot of things that we are going to talk about today and I'm going to discuss the latest travel restrictions in the Philippines. There's also a warning for unvaccinated individuals that you are restricted in your movement in several areas in the Philippines unless you are accessing essential goods and services. First, let me provide an easy to understand Philippine travel system. Many are asking where to find the official government announcement for international travel purposes. There's what we call an interagency task force, which is composed of different government agencies. They issue resolutions on entry requirements of Filipinos and non-Filipinos, including quarantine rules. The resolutions are published in the official Gazette of the Philippines. The Bureau of Immigration in the Philippines secures the Philippine border and implements immigration rules and they issue press releases on their official website. The Department of Foreign Affairs provides local and foreign services through the Philippine consulates and embassies abroad. All Philippine consulates and embassies abroad are under the jurisdiction of the DFA. For overseas Filipino workers, you can find the information through the Overseas Workers Welfare Administration. There are other sources of information, such as the Philippine Airlines website, especially for passengers of Philippine Airlines, and there are also official announcements from government agencies through their social media platforms. Let's move over to the eligible passenger requirement. Who are the eligible passengers to the Philippines? There are two kinds those who do not require a 9A temporary visitor's visa and these are Filipinos, former Filipino citizens, also dual citizens. In addition, foreign nationals with valid and existing visas and there are actually different types of visas and foreign spouse traveling with Filipino or former Filipino citizen can have the Balikbayan visa. Also foreign child traveling with Filipino or former Filipino do not need a 9A visa. Another type of eligible passengers to the Philippines are those who need a 9A temporary visitor's visa. Foreign spouse traveling alone, spouse or child must be in Philippines, or foreign child traveling with native foreign parent, Filipino parent must be in Philippines. Also, SRRV or retirees visa applicants must have entry exemption document from DFA and temporary visitors must secure entry exemption from DFA and travel is for business, humanitarian, and meritorious cases. For these eligible passengers, you must comply with quarantine and testing requirements. The Interagency Task Force publishes specific countries for green lane purposes or for green lane protocols. And for yellow lane countries, those not included in red list or green countries, they have separate protocols for quarantine. And also for red list, there are specific protocols and the countries are specified. You must distinguish the quarantine and testing from the entry requirements. It doesn't mean that if you're fully vaccinated from green lane, you can travel. Also, please remember the standard health protocols for all eligible passengers. This is applicable for all eligible passengers from green, yellow, or red countries. There is now a new requirement of a negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours prior to departure from country of origin. So let me provide you an example on how to count the hours prior to departure. For example, your flight is 3.48 p.m. February to Las Vegas and four hours of layover. Take your RT-PCR test within 48 hours prior to departure, prior to 3.48 p.m. So this is the window time. For example, you are leaving Las Vegas on 3.48 p.m. February 2. And let's say there is a layover and you are going to San Francisco first. And you will leave San Francisco at 9.30 p.m and you will arrive in Manila after 15 hours at 4.30 a.m. on February 4. So this is just an example. 
Another important requirement is that you must register through the One Health Pass within three days of arrival in the Philippines. There is an icon. This is the register. If you can see in the screen, this is where you will have to click on to the registration portal. For those required to quarantine in a hotel facility, you must have a confirmed hotel booking. So you need to go to One Health Pass website and find the quarantine facility list. These are the DOT accredited hotels. For those with connecting flights, pre-book your hotel at the first point of entry and not on the final destination. You must also use the Trace mobile application for contact tracing. In addition, face shield is optional only in alert levels 1, 2, or 3. And depending on the areas, for alert level 4, face shield is required and also for alert level 5. Please take note that the Philippines is not yet open for international tourism. The visa on arrival has been suspended. And if you are a foreign tourist or a temporary visitor and you don't have a Filipino wife or child in the Philippines, you must have a 9A visa and entry exemption document. The Philippines has not announced any reopening plans in the coming weeks or months. However, there is an important announcement from the Philippine government for all foreign nationals traveling on February 16 onwards. However, things could change anytime. If you are going to be affected by these travel protocols, please share in the comment section below. Those affected are foreign nationals, including former Filipino citizens. Former Filipino citizens are those who have been naturalized in a foreign country. The Interagency Task Force has announced that effective February 16 of 2022, there will be new entry requirement for foreign nationals, including former Filipino citizens. Foreign nationals allowed to enter the country shall be subject to the following additional protocols. You must be fully vaccinated as a requirement of your entry. Who is considered fully vaccinated? You will be considered fully vaccinated more than or equal two weeks after having received the second dose in a two-dose series or more than or equal two weeks after having received a single-dose vaccine. Booster shot is not required and there is no rule for a mixed vaccine. Now here are the vaccines allowed. Emergency use authorization list or compassionate special permit issued by the Philippine FDA or emergency use listing of the World Health Organization. Here are the approved vaccines for use in Philippines. Novavax formulation, Pfizer, also Moderna. Other vaccines are Sputnik, Janssen or Johnson & Johnson, Oxford, AstraZeneca, Covaxin, and Sinopharm, and also the Sinovac vaccine from China is also acceptable. Here are the exceptions to proof of full vaccination for foreign nationals. First, children below 18 years of age. Second, those who are medically unable to receive the vaccine as certified by a competent public health authority in the country or port of origin. And third, foreign diplomats and their qualified dependents such as 9E visa holders. Let's talk about the proof of vaccination for foreign nationals. You can present either one of the following World Health Organization ICV or a VaxCert PH or a National Digital Certificate of the Foreign Government which has accepted VaxCert under a reciprocity agreement. Please remember that the proof of vaccination must be from a country with reciprocity and you must be an eligible passenger to the Philippines and if you are not allowed passenger you cannot enter even if the country is listed where proof of vaccination is required or accepted and more countries will be added every 15 days.
if you are going to be affected by these travel protocols and you are slated to fly in the Philippines in the next few days or weeks, please share in the comment section below and could you please specify what type of passenger are you and what entry documents you were able to present at the immigration for entry purposes. Here are the new green lane countries and you are entitled to the corresponding quarantine protocols if you have been in these countries in the last 14 days. The first protocol is that you must be in a green lane country in the last 14 days and your vaccination must be validated. Please take note that there will be no hotel-based quarantine for fully vaccinated coming from green lane countries. This is actually good news for those passengers. However, you must have a negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours priority departure from country of origin. Also, you must self-monitor up to the seventh day of your arrival. For those unvaccinated, partially vaccinated or vaccination cannot be validated, there is actually a facility-based hotel quarantine. The requirement is that you must have a pre-booked hotel for six days and your quarantine will be five days. The testing will be on the fifth day of your arrival and self-monitor up to the 14th day. Here are the updated red list countries. There are new protocols for those coming from red list countries and you are not considered barred from entering the Philippines anymore. Here are the new red list protocols that are being implemented. You must be in a red list country in the last 14 days. And if you are fully vaccinated, your full vaccination must be validated. Here are the protocols. First, you must have a negative RT-PCR test within 72 hours prior to departure from the country of origin. In addition, you must have a seven days of hotel quarantine. Your testing will be on the seventh day of your arrival and home quarantine until the 14th day. There are separate protocols for those coming from red list countries for those unvaccinated, partially vaccinated, or the vaccination cannot be validated. First, you must have a negative RT-PCR test within 48 hours prior to departure from country of origin. Also, you must have a 10 days of hotel quarantine and your testing will be on the seventh day and the home quarantine will be done until the 14th day of your arrival. If you have been in other countries not included in the red list or green list, then your country is under the yellow list. And if you are in the yellow list, here are the protocols for quarantine and testing purposes. For fully vaccinated individuals, a negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours, priority departure from the country of origin will be required. And upon arrival, they shall undergo facility-based quarantine. You will still need to pre-book your hotel for six days, but you will undergo facility-based quarantine with an RT-PCR test taken on the fifth day. Once with a negative result, you may be released for completion of home quarantine up to the seventh day from the date of arrival. It's a protocol for unvaccinated. Individuals who are unvaccinated, partially vaccinated, or whose vaccination status cannot be independently validated. A negative RT-PCR test taken within 48 hours priority departure from the country of origin will be required. And upon your arrival, you shall undergo facility-based quarantine with an RT-PCR test done on the seventh day, with the date of arrival being the first day. Once with a negative result, they may be released for completion of home quarantine up to the 14th day from the date of arrival. Here are the eligible passengers to the Philippines and the immigration entry requirements. Let's talk about who are the only eligible passengers or those who are allowed to enter the Philippines. You needed to present your proof of Filipino citizenship, such as a Philippine passport. However, there are Filipinos whose passport has been lost damaged or expired there is actually 
a relief or a remedy so Filipinos without Philippine passport can travel to the Philippines by obtaining a travel document from Philippine consulate abroad for emergency use. Please remember that this travel document is only allowed for applicants who cannot be issued a Philippine passport and have an emergency travel to the Philippines such as due to medical or legal reasons or death in the family. This is only a one-time use travel document and it's only good for 30 days from its issuance. So this is only a one-way ticket to the Philippines and if you needed a Philippine passport you must apply once you arrive in the Philippines. Another set of passengers are dual citizens. Dual citizens are Filipinos who have acquired a foreign citizenship and at the same time reacquired Filipino citizenship. You actually have two options. If you don't have your Philippine passport, you can present your dual citizenship documents. Another type of passengers are former Filipinos. These are Filipinos who have been naturalized in a foreign country. That means that your Filipino citizenship is renounced upon foreign naturalization. In addition, former Filipinos in possession of Philippine passport becomes void because you are no longer a Filipino. Another important information to remember is that former Filipinos can still travel to the Philippines through the Balikbayan visa. If you are a former Filipino and you still have a valid Philippine passport, does that make you a dual citizen? The answer is no. Former Filipinos who are in possession of an expired or valid Philippine passport after becoming a foreign citizen does not make you a dual citizen. Please remember this. There is actually a special privilege granted to former Filipinos. Former Filipinos can travel to the Philippines through the Balikbayan Visa Program and you can avail this visa upon arrival in the Philippines. In addition, Balikbayan visa is free and you must proceed to Filipino lane upon arrival at the immigration. You need to ask immigration that you will be availing of Balikbayan visa. Also, in addition, you will be granted Balikbayan visa, which is valid for one year upon arrival in the Philippines. Now, former Filipinos can travel alone or with family members such as a spouse or children. Now, if a former Filipino will be traveling together with foreign spouse or foreign children, both spouse or children can avail of Balikbayan visa and stay in Philippines visa-free for one year. The foreign spouse or foreign children traveling together with former Filipino must have a return or onward ticket. Also, foreign spouse or children must have a valid passport for at least six months and beyond. Now, here are the immigration entry requirements for former Filipinos. Your foreign passport plus your Philippine passport, old or valid, or your foreign passport and authentic birth certificate for former Filipinos or Filipinos Traveling with their foreign spouse, the foreign spouse must present their foreign passport plus authentic marriage certificate. If traveling with a foreign child, foreign passport plus authentic birth certificate. For adopted child, foreign passport plus adoption certificate. Visa-free privileges for foreign nationals married to Filipino or former Filipino traveling together under EO-408. Also, you must present an authentic marriage certificate. Also, report of marriage is not required to enter in the Philippines. In addition, proceed to Filipino lane at immigration and tell immigration you will be availing of the Balikbayan visa. Now, let me provide you the immigration entry requirements for traveling couples. First, you must present authentic marriage certificate. Second, passport must be valid for six months and beyond for non-Filipinos. And third, 
Return or onward ticket is not required for Filipinos or former Filipinos, but check with the airline for requirements. Those who are admitted as Balikbayans are given an initial stay of one year. They may extend their stay for another one, two, or six months provided that they present their valid passport and filled out the visa extension form and submitted to the visa extension section in the Bureau of Immigration main office or any Bureau of Immigration offices nationwide. So an additional requirement will be asked for Balikbayans who have stayed in the Philippines after 36 months or three years. Effective December 24 of 2021, a Filipino and foreign spouse, which means a native foreign spouse with same-sex marriage, shall be temporarily admitted. Now let me provide you the law or the rules for gay or lesbian couples married abroad and one of them is either a Filipino or former Filipino. Under the Family Code of the Philippines, Article 26, all marriages solemnized outside the Philippines in accordance with the laws in force in the country where they were solemnized and valid there as such shall also be valid in the country or in the Philippines except those prohibited under Articles 35 or 36, 37, and 38. Now, let's talk about another set of eligible passengers, foreign spouse not traveling with Filipino spouse. And I mean these are native foreign spouse, not former Filipinos. You must have a 9A visa from a Philippine consulate and your passport must be valid for at least six months and beyond. You must also have a return or onward ticket. In addition, the Filipino spouse must be in the Philippines at the time of your intended travel. Now, what are the immigration requirements for a foreign spouse? First, you must present an authentic marriage certificate. The immigration will not accept copies or fake documents. Now, let's talk about native foreign parent with Filipino child in Philippines. First, you must have a valid 9A visa and second, passport must be valid for at least six months and beyond. And third, you must have a return or onward ticket. In addition, the Filipino child must be in the Philippines at the time of your intended travel. Now, what are the entry requirements for foreign parent with Filipino child in the Philippines? First, you must have an authentic birth certificate of the child to prove filiation. Otherwise, you will not be allowed entry. Always present authentic or original documents to the immigration. The foreign nationals who are allowed to travel, but you must have a valid and existing visa. First, special resident retirees visa or holders of SRRV visa. The SRRV visa can be applied at the Philippines under the Philippine Retirement Authority. Other set of foreign nationals allowed are holders of Philippine immigrant visas, holders of a 13A, 13B, 13C, 13D, 13E, and 13G visas. Other set of foreign nationals allowed are accredited foreign government and international organization officials and their dependents. Another set of passengers are foreign airline crew members. Also, please take note that the Philippine government sets the rules regarding the requirements on pre-booking a hotel for quarantine purposes. Now, in compliance with Philippine regulations, only one person is allowed per room except for the following. Families from the same household traveling together, especially those with minors. Also, those health and emergency frontline services personnel are also exempted from this rule. Another set of passengers are those guests requiring a companion such as minor children or children below 18 years of or age or persons needing assistance such as senior citizens those who have disabilities and those who have medical illnesses or conditions now if you think you are qualified in any of these exemptions 
you will be asked to sign a waiver when you quarantine in a hotel. Now, there are also other requirements when pre-booking a hotel, and this is the most important. First, the hotel must be accredited or must be in the list of hotels allowed by the Department of Tourism or by the Bureau of Quarantine, and these are the only acceptable hotels. Now, where to find the most up-to-date accredited hotels in the Philippines? You needed to go to onehealthpass.com.ph and click on Quarantine Facilities. Steps prior to departure. The first step is to register or fill out the One Health Pass registration a few days before travel and get the transaction number. For step two, you must pre-book a hotel for non-overseas Filipino workers and foreign nationals. For OFWs, you will be sponsored and everything is paid for by OWA. For step 3, you must update the One Health Pass registration with electronic health declaration form checklist the day before or on the day of travel and acquire the QR code, print or screenshot your QR code. Of course, the first step is to present your One Health Pass QR code to the Bureau of Quarantine personnel for verification and apply for shortened quarantine hotel if applicable. Step 2 is to present the One Health Pass for arrival and hotel assignment. Now, Step 3 is you needed to proceed to the Bureau of Immigration for arrival clearance, baggage claim, and customs inspection. Step 4 is to take the accredited transport service for all non-overseas Filipino workers and foreigners or foreign nationals. A Philippine airline passenger, here are the requirements. After registering for the One Health Pass, passengers will be provided with a QR code which will contain the payment link. So the same payment link will also be sent via the registered email address and you must book the early testing up option through the prepayment link. And passengers may opt to book only until the day of their arrival. Strictly pre-booked and prepaid passengers will be entertained. No phone bookings and on-site payment are accepted. Limited slots are available. Early swab testing option will automatically close once maximum number of booking is reached. If you are required to pay the testing fee for your flight, the testing fee in Manila via the DOH accredited partner Detoxicare is at 2,500 pesos. There is an expedited early swab test under the toxic care molecular diagnostics. For those who are asking about the proof of recovery, the Philippine government has not made any announcement if they are going to accept proof of recovery from COVID. If you have any other questions or comments, please post them down below and I will get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you guys for supporting my channel and if you haven't liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up. And if you haven't subscribed to my channel, please subscribe and hit that notification bell. I always welcome new subscribers. Thank you guys for watching. I hope everyone is staying safe and have a great day.